Hello and welcome to The Pet Stop. I'm Dr. Brian Voynich from the American Animal Hospital in Randolph. Spring is here and everyone wants to be outside with their canine companions. If you have a dog park in your neighborhood, it's a great place for both you and your pet to enjoy the balmy weather. But you want to be prepared and aware of the potential hazards that you may be walking into. Well, my next guest is, do, is a dog behavioral therapist and trainer, Greg Cleva. He's with Barkbusters and also host of It's a Dog's Life on Sirius XM's Martha Stewart Living Radio. Really good to see you again, Greg. Always nice to be here with you, Dr. Thanks. Morning. Tell us about your uh, your guest here. That's my little uh, Yorkie friend, Clyde. Okay. You, you can't see her right now, but Yorkie with a tail. You don't see that very often. <laughs> He's my neighbor's dog. He's got a little sister named Bonnie at home watching. Love Yorkies. If Yorkies had perfect teeth, they would be the most perfect animal on the earth. And you have to just really pay attention to cleaning their teeth on a regular basis. Yeah, those small dogs need their, uh, their oh. dental health for sure. But, he, but yeah, he's a good little sweet. dog. Yep, yep. And uh, so dog parks, uh, tell us, especially for a little guy like you've got here, uh, can be intimidating. And <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Hey, anybody who listens to me on radio or who knows me otherwise uh, knows that I'm not really a huge fan of dog parks. And uh, I think too many people use dog parks as a substitute for a good exercise or, or, or acceptable exercise, like walking their dog or training with their dog. Okay. They take their dogs to dog parks to expend energy, and you get a lot of dogs in that situation, and it can be a recipe for disaster. So I'm not anti-dog park. But I think it's important for people to understand that if you're going to take your dog there, there's a, a right way and a wrong way to do it. Use them correctly. Absolutely. Yeah. I, you know, I, I saw this coming, you know, because we've had a lot of guests that were trying to have dog parks, um, you know, established in their areas. And it's a terrific idea. It's a great concept. It is. And we had a, a list of... Um, uh, of topics that's you know do's and don'ts and beware and you and I are on the same page with this so it's uh, it's it's very uh, good information to to give out I'm glad to hear I'm on the right track <laughs> yeah you absolutely are so you have to know your dog first obviously you had mentioned right Greg know, know your dog's personality for sure you know d not every dog is suited for the dog park know your dog's personality if your dog is more soft natured uh -huh. um, your dog is not necessarily going to be uh, a great candidate for the dog park you want to test your dog with other dogs yeah get it around other dogs I kind of I equate it to an amusement park for children. Not every kid loves the amusement park or loves roller coasters, so don't force it upon them. The same is true for dogs and dog parks. If your dog is comfortable around other dogs, great. Yeah. Tr give it a try. Mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, don't uh, just rush into it. Start out slowly. and uh, Definitely. You know, you don't want to go during busy hours if your dog is new to the dog park. Mm -hmm. Take a roll by there in the car. Check out what's going on. Watch the dogs and the owners. If, the, if, the, if it's a quiet time, that's a great time to start. If the owners seem like they have good control of their dogs, that's a plus. Yeah. Um, if, the, uh, if it's too busy or the dogs are too rambunctious, don't take your dog in there when it might be intimidated. Right, right. Uh, and also, you know, uh, Check it out, uh, you know, as far as um, I probably better to go without your dog initially. Huh? It's, just, it's, just it's not a bad idea. Like I said, see what's observe. going on at the dog park. And then if you do decide to go, uh, start slow. Start with maybe a short trip, 15 minutes. Yeah. Even shorter if you want to. And, and better, you know, it's complicated enough with the interaction between the dogs, but if you have your children with you, that's another... Uh, <laughs> Uh, tough uh, situation to handle. Most dog parks have pretty uh, a, a pretty good set of rules posted at the dog park, and a lot of them will say no kids under the age of 13 or 15 or 16. And it's a good idea. You know, kids are very excitable, dogs are very excitable, and again, when you when you get that mixed together, it can be it can be problematic. We don't want dogs getting hurt, and we certainly don't want little kids getting knocked sure, down. Sure, sure. And, and explain unleash your dog. Well, you know, dogs have a fight or flight mentality, so when you take your dog into a dog park. You want to make sure you unleash the dog right away because it's a little bit intimidating. All the dogs are going to rush up and, and check your dog out. Yeah. And if your dog has any kind of fear or feels intimidated and feels that tension on the leash, that fight or flight mentality may kick in. No flight option. A fight is likely to happen. So unclip the leash as soon as you get in there. Mm -hmm. And body language is extremely important to observe. It's one of the most important things that I teach dog owners. If you're going to take your dog into the dog park, make sure you can understand what your dog is communicating to can you, you about that example, situation. Greg? Well, you see Clyde here. He's a pretty mellow little guy. You see his tail is down. Yeah. His head is kind of low. He's nice and calm. It's down, but it's not curved not underneath, tuck. so tuck. he's not freaked out or nervous exactly. or anxious. Tuck mm -hmm. would be more fear. Yeah. That dog you definitely want to get out of the dog park yeah. because it's obviously intimidating. Yeah. But low, kind of calm. The dogs are going to check each other out. That's mm -hmm. perfectly fine. But if if you see dogs who are get that stiffness and stillness in their body language, if the head's perked up, the ears are perked up, the tail is sticking up and twitching in particular, wagging tail doesn't always mean a happy dog. That's right. So that could be problematic. That, that could be a, a fight that's about to ensue. Yeah. And if you see that body language and you see a dog is becoming aggressive, what do you do? You, we hope that dog owners have enough control and reliability in their obedience with their dogs that they can call the dog out of that situation. Yeah. You never want to jump in the middle of a dog fight. You never no, want to grab a point. collar and pull the dog out because at that point, 
again, it's that fight or flight mentality. You're just another animal jumping into the fight and you're going to get bit. Yeah. You know, in, in my 30 years of experience, I've seen a lot of uh, injuries where people just try to dive in and uh, it's just a bad situation. Absolutely. If you if there is a fight at the dog park, the best thing you can do is make as much noise as possible. Throw a, a, a metal dog bowl in between the dogs in the, in the fight. Uh, get a tree branch or something. If there's a broom around, try to get the broom handle in between the dogs and water works great. So throw water on the dogs and hopefully that will disorient them long enough where you can get them separated. Yeah. And what about bringing uh, toys and water and all that kind of thing? You always want to avoid anything that could be problematic. You know, mm -hmm. some dogs are resource guarders. They will guard food and toys and treats, et yeah. cetera, et cetera. Um, it just, you shouldn't bring it. I, I was at a dog park one time and a guy had a pizza delivered to the dog park. Oh, no. <laughs> Not a good idea. So, yeah, you want to avoid that stuff as well. Okay. And, and it's really difficult when, when you have someone with bad manners, you know, that, that, that they're just, they don't care. They do, they're not knowledgeable enough to know that, that their dog is doing inappropriate things and they should be at it. And there. unfortunately, what? everyone at the dog park is a know it all. And, you know, oh, <laughs> that's okay. The dogs are roughing each other up. They'll work it out. Just leave them alone. Again, that could be a mistake. Uh, you know, people are on the phone. The, the number yeah. One rule of dog parks is supervise your dog. Be aware of what's going on. Pay attention. Yeah. If you're, you know, in the corner on your cell phone sipping your latte, you're going to miss <laughs> uh, problematic behavior. So, so be aware and supervise. Greg, it's really great to have you. Good advice. Always I appreciate nice to be it here. very much. Thanks, okay, Dr. Well,